Windows and doors are predefined models in libraries that can be placed as instances in the objects, and they automatically subtract a hole in the object. Here we show a few predefined windows and doors that come with Form Z, which are placed from the component's pellet. As we spin the view to the back side, you can see that a hole is automatically created in the model. Since windows and doors are similar to components, it is recommended to watch the components video tutorial first for a better understanding of how to place, create, and edit components. In this tutorial, we'll look at the place window and the create window tools, which are located in the components suite of icons. We'll also take a look at the reposition window tool, which lets you move a window or a door and its associated hole in one operation. Let's begin by selecting the Rectangle Drawing Tool, and we'll choose the 3D Wall icon, and we'll extrude an object for a wall. Select the Place Window Tool. Then in the Components palette, be sure the Window Door tab is selected. Then select a door from the Door Library. Now click on a face of the object, and the door is placed parallel to that face on that object. Select the Windows Library, choose a window, and then click on the face of the object again to place a window. Use the Move tool and move the door and window from the wall, and observe that a hole is automatically subtracted from the object when placing doors and windows. Please note that if we use the Move tool on a window, the associativity of the window with the wall is lost. If we want to move the window and maintain the associativity with the wall, then we need to use the Reposition Window Tool instead. Undo the previous move. Select the Reposition Window Tool, then drag the door to a new location. And observe that the hole follows. We'll do the same with the window. When repositioning a door or a window, you can select the Copy icon in the Tool Options palette to make a copy if desired. There is only one option in the Tool Options palette when placing windows and doors, which is the Mirror option. This option is useful when placing asymmetric windows, such as this partial arched window. First, we place the window with this option off. Then we place the same window with this option on. We can change the parameters of a placed window using the same technique used for components. Pick the window with a Pick tool and select the Parameters tab in the Tool Options palette. For example, we can change the mirror parameter if needed. And we can replace this window with a new window by dragging and dropping a different window from the components palette onto the icon in the Tool Options palette. And the window is replaced. Let's examine the associativity between the window and the object they are placed into. For example, if we use the Delete tool to delete the wall, the windows are deleted also because they are associated with the wall. Undo that operation and now delete a single window. And the hole disappears because the hole in the wall is associated with the window. You can disable this associativity by either moving the window with a Move tool or ungrouping the window. This is accomplished by right-clicking on the window and choosing Ungroup. This separates the window into its individual parts, and there's no longer a link between the window and the wall. So now, if you delete the wall, then the window remains. Or if you undo that, and if you delete the window parts, then the hole remains. In this next part of the tutorial, we'll create a window using the Create Window tool. Windows and doors are created using a similar technique as for the components, but with a couple of additional requirements. The first requirement is that the window or door must be created flat on the XY plane. And the second requirement is that you have certain required objects on two layers named Component Frame and Component Interior Trim. Beyond these, you can have as many other layers as you like. We begin by creating a new layer named Component Frame. And then we can create the objects for the frame on the XY plane using any of the standard modeling tools. 
Be sure that the frame object extends above and below the XY plane. This is necessary for the window to work properly in order to punch a hole through a wall. You can build the frame anywhere, but in this example I positioned the lower left corner of the frame at the 000 world origin because I decided to use this as my insert point for the window. Now let's create another layer and we'll name it Component Interior Trim. And then on that layer we'll build some more objects that make up the back side of the window. These objects must be below the XY plane. Switch to a right side view to better illustrate that our component frame object extends through the XY plane and the component interior trim object is positioned below the XY plane. As a side note, let's take a brief look at why the objects on these two layers are critical for the window to work properly. Here we show the same sample window being placed into a slightly transparent wall of variable depth. When placing the window, the Place Window tool will look for the component frame layer to determine the shape of the opening to be cut into the wall. The opening is automatically determined by the XY cross section through the objects on this layer. This automatic cross section shape becomes the shape of the hole in the object when the window is placed. In addition, the objects on this layer are also stretched to match the depth of the wall. When placing the window, the Place Window tool will also look for the Component Interior Trim layer and automatically move these objects so they are flush with the back side of the wall. Now that we have a better understanding concerning the two critical layers, we can finish up the window by creating additional objects on other layers as desired. We are now ready to create a window component. Since the window component preview icon is based on the active view when we save the window, switch to a top view. And then we will select all the parts with the pick tool and then select the create window tool. Now it's time to click on the origin. This origin point is the insertion point where you place the window on your object. Since we created our window using the 000 world origin as our base, just type in the values in the numeric input palette. So for X, I'll type in 0, hit the tab key, type in 0, hit the tab key, type in 0, and then hit the enter key. Now we'll type a name for the window, such as double hung window. Click the OK button and the new window is added to the embedded library in the components palette. And this is under the window door tab. We can now use the place window tool to place this window multiple times in our project. Observe that the insertion point is at the lower left corner of the window. To edit a window used in this project, select the desired item from the project library under the window door tab. Then either click the open icon or right click on the item and choose the open option. And the window is opened in its own project window where we can make all the desired changes. For example, we'll delete the mullions on our window. And then after that we can save it and we can close the file. And all the components placed in your project are automatically updated. A second method is to right click on a component in your project and choose Edit Component. In the Edit Group mode you will see only the components and any other instances of that component. Make the desired changes to your component such as reshaping the side faces of the front of the frame outward. Then right click again and choose Component Complete. And the changes will be propagated to all the other components. It should be noted that all the windows you place or create in your project are listed in the embedded library under the Window Door tab and are embedded inside the file. 
If we want to have access to a window in other projects, then we need to export the window into a custom library on your hard drive. Use the same procedure we used in the components video tutorial. And this concludes the Windows and Doors tutorial.